Here at Mason House Farm, uh, over the last six months, we've generally been looking at the feeding of the dry cows and how that's run through into the milk cows. We've had issues with subclinical acidosis in the milk cows that we've been aware of for a while. Um, our vets have been looking with the Livestock Northwest scheme at doing some testing, so we've done some rumen taps on the cows and looked at motility, and identified the acidosis problem. The main signs of acidosis or subclinical acidosis would be loose faeces, fibre coming through in the faeces, um, possibly cud balling, which is when they spit out the acid uh, stomach contents, or tail swishing, which is when it's coming out the back end, it stings. Um, dirty cows because of the loose faeces, but across the herd level you'll see a reduction in cow health and performance. So although a lot of energy will be going into the diet and being fed to the cows, because the digestion is upset of the cow, that's actually all coming out of the back end in the loose muck. We looked at the body condition score of the cows, um, which is how much weight they have, how much they're feeding, the stomachs, the rumen fill, uh, and we took a sample from the stomach as well to assess the rumen pH with a pH meter and also looked at the bugs that were in the rumen, see how many there were and how active they were. Um, we also did a, a full metabolic profile, blood samples of the cows to assess their energy status compared to the energy that was actually in the diet which we also measured. We think that it's partly because of a lack of dry cow intakes, so we've been working towards getting more straw into the dry cows. Um, previously we'd been feeding perhaps too much silage and the intake was there but we had problems uh, with calcium at calving. So now we've isolated this uh, acidosis problem over the last six months or so. We've been trying to uh, combat that by giving more long fibre in the form of mostly hay to the milk cows uh, and also giving them acid buff onto the silage and giving them options of sodium bicarb and uh, rock salts. Historically we've been using a 2010-10 compound fertiliser. Uh, so this is Andy Taylor from Promar. He's been looking at whether that's been the right fertiliser for our system and whether we can change it for anything else that will maybe pay better to complement the slurry. Yeah, since we started three years ago, we've now got a full nutrient plan set up for the farm. We look at the silage fields and also the grazing fields. We're now utilising the slurry to provide the P and the K requirement for the grazing ground and also for the silage cuts. We use um, urea early spring for the, get the available nitrogen from that. We'd put 3,000 gallon on, on our cutting ground, after cutting and before cutting, and we then go on with a 27,015 later on in the season. How are you finding the grass growth this year? Uh, it's been luscious this luscious. year, Andy. <laughs> uh, we've also gone on to making three crops of silage, rather than the uh, original two, and using the after cut till, I think has been more beneficial there because we've had two goals with it each year. In terms of financial value, Andy, how much do you think we've saved there? The financial value straight off from the muck being spread, you have done some by uh, um, band spreading rather yep. than splash plate. Mm. There's going to be £14 a hectare saving on nitrogen usage there with that. Um, on terms of changing from 2010-10 to either urea or ammonia nitrate, we're probably talking um, 20 to £30 pounds a tonne saving mm. depending on when you buy it and on the fertiliser prices. That's fabulous news, basically. Yeah, it's great news. It's, it's pure profit to the, to the farm. It goes straight in the bottom line. It is, and it's uh, better for our carbon footprint. Yeah, exactly.